Bill, thank you. And that I spoke to a number at your recommendation, really, small businesses in Ohio that were worried about making payroll. They were all over the country. I, Senator Romney talked about his in Utah, everywhere. Um, and I spoke to banks and credit unions who understand how important it was to have confidence and uh, the, what, what you did gave them that confidence, so thank you. Uh, bank failures are a painful reminder about the importance of strong safeguards. It's the same thing, maybe it's just what I'm thinking about so much, but it's the same thing when I think about the disaster in East Palestine. Uh, the railroad, railroad lobbyists continue just aggressively to lobby um, this body and to lobby the regulators, and they succeed in weaker standards for communities and for workers uh, and for railroad safety. We see the same kind of aggressive lobbying from bank lobbyists uh, to weaken standards. Uh, the, the administration weakened standards, the previous administration weakening uh, under 2155, those standards. So I, um, I appreciate how you stand up strong on these issues. Um, I just today, earlier, you haven't seen it yet, I sent you and other regulators a letter urging you to do a full review of bank failures and strengthen guardrails so this doesn't happen again. So thank you what you what you have done and will continue to do there. Um, th uh, three pretty quick questions, I hope. Um, the, the Inflation Reduction Act created new tax credits to support the domestic solar industry. As Treasury finalizes rules, will you ensure that China's solar industry can't profit from these credits without developing a genuine domestic supply chain? Um, yes. The purpose of one purpose of IRA is to make sure that we reduce our dependence on China and have um, a strong domestic. Uh, capacity and uh, the features of the law uh, guarantee, guarantee that, and we're working on guidance to implement the law that will lead to that result. Thank you. Ohio has uh, the biggest solar, about to have the biggest solar manufacturer in North America. We will continue working on that. And, and Mr. Chairman, I, you know I can't come to this committee when Secretary Yellen is testifying and not bring up the child tax credit. Um, I, I want to thank you again for helping us. I mean, it was, it was uh, non, not unprecedented, but remarkable perhaps. We passed that bill in March. President, signed, President Biden signed it two years ago, uh, signed it uh, quickly. You got up and running the child tax credit by July. 60 million children and their families benefited from that. Um, it was so important. We've heard some on the other side that find all kinds of made up or partially made up reasons to oppose the child tax credit. They want to cut taxes, but not for middle income and low income families. Uh, President Trump's IRS commissioner asked Congress to give IRS the, necessity, the authority necessary to establish minimum competency standards for paid tax preparers. Uh, this, these, these issues about CTC and EITC error rates are always exaggerated by the other side. And my question is this, if paid tax preparers had to demonstrate a bare minimum expertise, do you think we'd see fewer errors with both the ITC and CTC? Do you think Congress should give IRS this authority? Yes, I believe that Congress should. I support that proposal. Um, at present, incompetent and dishonest paid preparers disadvantage taxpayers and undermine confidence in the tax system. And I believe IRS should have the authority to oversee paid preparers and make sure that they help taxpayers file more accurate returns. And in turn, that would protect them from penalties and interest costs from poor quality advice that some now receive. Thank you. I, I wish my colleagues were as interested in in tax cheating among billionaires as they were low-income people, but I guess that's just the way politics in 2023 seems to work. Uh, last question, I want to start, I want to ask you about another fiasco that should be easy to avoid, the debt limit. It's the definition of a self-inflicted blow to the economy. Instead of ensuring we avoid default by paying all our bills in time, some Republicans are pursuing a path we all know won't work, and I want you to comment on it. You said before that debt prioritization isn't feasible. You've called it default by another name, your words. But Republicans are moving forward anyway with a bill that ranks what order payments should go out. They put Wall Street and China at the front of the line. If Treasury followed this Republican plan, bearing in mind that China holds about a trillion dollars in U.S. debt, who would get paid first, China or seniors receiving Social Security and vets receiving VA benefits? 
Well, if that were prioritized, China would get paid um, ahead of them. We, we believe, I believe, that prior, prioritization of payments, as you said, is default by another name. We need to pay our bills. We need to pay all of our bills. That um, willingness and commitment to be um, responsible in paying bills that have already been incurred is what underlies the United States' strong credit rating and um, credit rating agencies like Fitch have already weighed in that if we were to fail to pay um, any of our bills that that would call into question whether or not we deserve um, our, current, our current credit rating. And you. uh, it's simply a recipe for economic and financial catastrophe to think we can pay some of our bills and not all of them. Thank you. This debt prioritization sounds like another version of uh, Senator Scott's uh, privatization of Medicare and Social Security. It makes no sense to the country and to most of us. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Th thank you. And I, I will just tell my colleague, in red counties in Oregon over the weekend, I went through this idea that we pay China and Wall Street first, and people were just stunned. So I think you made a very important point. Senator Bennett is next. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.